welcome everybody. <laughs> <laughs> You're not used to this. Nah. Welcome everybody to Life in Stereo TV .com. I have my great friend Jay Stewart. What's up, man? What's going on? <laughs> What's going on, world? What's, what's the deal? Queens in the building. You heard. <laughs> So, yes, yo, indeed. me and Jay go back a long ways. Uh, we met through DJ Rerock. True, indeed. I used to own a website that sold vinyl, wherehiphoplives.com, mm -hmm. and you worked at a uh, record um, distributor. distributor. Yeah. Liaison Records. Well, liaison, they distributed GoGo. -Go. They distributed Baltimore Club. They uh, had... Uh, they was exclusively distributing Nervous and Strictly Rhythm records. So we did the um, first Black Moon, first Mad Lion, um, first Smith & Wesson. Yeah. Got a lot, of, a lot of records from you guys. Yes. Thank you. Yep. So today, look, but you used to work for Raucous Records. Yes, indeed. One of the most influential underground hip-hop record labels of all time. Yes. That's what we're going to talk about today. Let's do it. <laughs> All right? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. So. Day one? Yeah, how, day how, one. How, how did you start working for Rockers Records? Um, I uh, I was working at a record store called Kemp Mill. and um, oh, Which one? The one that was in College Park. And, um, College Park. I, I worked all of them, but okay. it was right next door to Cluck You. At the time, but now it's in the deep oh, store. Oh, the, the, the one that they changed the CD game exchange? Is is that what? Nah, oh, nah. okay. It's a Adidas store now. I used to be next door to, uh, uh, next door to Cluck okay. U. That used to be their warehouse, and um, I was working at two uh, Kemp Mills at the time. I was working there, and I was working in Silver Spring, which, uh, you know, all of them are gone now. But I was uh, going through the racks of the CDs, and um, I saw this CD. Matter of fact, could I get up? Go ahead. <laughs> Oh boy! I saw this CD right here. Here he goes showing off, <laughs> showing off the collection. <laughs> I got it out because I was checking it out. And this is a um, promo that Rock has put out oh. called "The Cleaner," and wow. they they, um, they sent it to various record stores. Um, what Rock was used to do is they just would send out a whole bunch of stuff, hoping it would catch. That that's how the music game was then, uh, especially the independents. They would just send out free stuff, and hopefully somebody there would, you know, pick it up. And I picked up Sound that, Clash was yes. on here. Yes. So I picked up that CD, which was in our racks, and um, I played it. And I was like, whoa, this is like the greatest stuff I heard in a while. Literally played it again, kept playing it, kept playing it. Um, today's kids who are in the music game, I grabbed the back of this CD and called the number. <laughs> Remember them days? Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was just that simple. I called the phone number, uh, which was the 212 number, and went straight to Raucous's office. Um, somebody picked up the phone, which doesn't even happen now. And um, they was like, you know, who is this? I was like, uh, yeah, my name is Jay Stewart. I work for Kent Mill Records. I do, like, a lot of music stuff in the D.C. area. Um, I like the music that's on this. Are y'all looking for reps? They said we're looking for a rep in... Maryland, D.C., Virginia. I said, I'm your guy. Right. Would have done it for free. They was like, we'll pay you $500 a month. I was like, yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. So it was that simple. Um, gave them my address. Um, we started sending posters. First record I worked was uh, Lyricist Lounge. And then they said, uh, we got two MCs coming out. Name most deaf and Tyler Kweli. So the Black Star Al Black Star album and uh, Lyricist Lounge album was the first two records that I worked, and they came out like within weeks apart of each other. So it was they sent me a whole bunch of posters, and I was like, "Whoa, most deaf!" I was a big fan of most deaf. Didn't know too much about Kweli until like you know till they started sending me stuff, and I was right. like, "Yo, whoa, Kweli is crazy." So. Was this the Lyricist Lounge with the cartoon cover? Mm -hmm. Dub, mm. Yeah, double, yeah, double CD. Yep, yeah, yeah. So um, maybe a month after they started sending me posters, they said, "Hey, um, most and Tyler Quali are coming to DC. We want you to take them around." 
And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, nah. He was like, yeah, we want you to take them around. And I was like, whatever. Yeah, let's do it. So they came to town. Um, this was back in the days. Nobody knew who we, who they were. Um, we went to Adams Morgan uh, to like a restaurant. Uh, we went to a couple CD stores. And then this was when BET was still here. Nobody so, nobody knew who they were. Nobody knew who they were. And I'm like, yeah, restaurants. Just... Yo, I'm driving. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, look who's in my back. And High Tech was there too. Big up High Tech. Oh, so um, damn. Um, we went to uh, you know uh, they went to what was the kids show on BET? Teen Summit. With the Teen Summit, they did Teen Summit. Oh, this was when BET was still like wow across the street. Shout uh, out Ananda. Is that? Uh, I think. I, don't uh, okay. know. I was like in awe. Like well, one, the, one of the I'm, fine girls. I was in BT. awe, like in the green room, like, yo, <laughs> does anybody see? They riding with me. So um, uh, we finish that. <clears throat> we get something to eat. And um, Raucous was indie, but uh, they had this dude named Howie McDuffie. And I'll never forget it. Our third call, Howie McDuffie gets on the call, and he says, yo, y'all are reps. We're paying y'all. So y'all got to do marketing. That's like going through the stores. Y'all got to do street team. That's like holding, you know, putting all the snipes yeah. up, up uh, by the clubs and just getting the word out, uh, guerrilla marketing style. And they said, y'all are promo too. Y'all are going to make sure this stuff gets played on the radio. So I'm like... <laughs> how, how am I, how am I going to do this? Yeah, because this is a process that um, the major labels were running the radio stations. Um and it's like a process you go you go there Tuesday and um, you literally let them play the music and i have never forget when I heard had the Black Star I went to KYS and it was a program director and it was just like um, Brown Sugar when he played the music and the lady didn't even listen to it right that exact I had that exact stage alright we're up. we'll give you a call thank you bye then I left but luckily at WPGC Big Tigger always wanted to be a rapper. Always wanted to be a freestyler. I literally went to PGC and rang the door, rang the bell, and they had like the ring before its time. They had like the little With thing the screen, with, yeah. So, um, Big Tigger used to hang out with uh, a crew called the Was it the Barbershop Connection? It was something like that. And a couple of those dudes were going upstairs to, to meet Tigger. And then um, I was like, hey, what's up? My name is Jay. I work for Raucous. And I was like, yo, this is most deaf and quality. And one of them was like, what? So he called Tigger. And I was like, Tigger, yo, most and quality are downstairs. Tigger was like, bring him up. Tigger did whatever he wanted at PGC. He, he, um, he used to be, he used to be the He got to there. the point where, like, and that's unheard of because you got to go through a process to get play, you know, people in, which I found out a little bit later when I got banned from a couple stations. <laughs> but... Tigger was like, yeah, bring him up. And brought him up to PGC. It was like Friday night. Mm. Um, and it was... Friday night mix shows. It was the most incredible thing I've ever seen in my life. Because they just started freestyling. They was freestyling over Nas's like. And most and quality with freestyle and name everything that we did that day. From the restaurant we was at the water we was drinking at the restaurant to some of the streets that we passed some stuff that happened at BET the most amazing thing I saw then even Tigger got on he started freestyling um, which they liked and um, they just built a bond from that day and I got radio spins that day wow without even you know without even trying and that's unheard of for, for, for which song the uh, for um uh Sound Clash Nah, it was uh, um, it was the one with Common. Um, shoot, God, I got it right over yeah, there. You had to go back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we, I, I'll show you what it was, but it was um, uh, what was it? Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it. Y'all get it. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the day that. Like changed everything in DC. Uh, uh, Rockets started getting spins on P a major station, and um, I, I mean, they tickled the town pink. 
you know what I'm saying, as, as I guess you could say. And they. So what happened to KYS during this time? Oh, KYS never played. Never. I mean, they didn't get on until it started popping. They didn't get on. It was Respiration. Respiration was the song. I'm sorry to okay. go back to that, but that uh, Respiration was the song. Yeah. How could you not play Respiration? Like. Oh, nah. Back then, um, radio stations, even record stores, couldn't even pronounce Tyler Kweli's name, much less knew who he was. People knew most because he did like acting. He did. Um, <laughs> he was on the. Um, Before then, I because <laughs> yeah. I had never heard of most until. Bill Cosby had a show called The Cosby Mysteries. Most of that was... Yes, yes, he. Nobody knew who he was, like, yeah. And he did commercials and stuff like that. So he was, you know, familiar. Um, He did the, uh, what was it, the the UDQ? What was the, uh, it it was him and his brother and sister. And he he was on the Bush Babies joint. Mm -hmm. Um, But he wasn't wasn't known, but people knew his his face from acting. Quali, um... You know, nobody knew who he was, but he was half of what's on the Black Star album, and you know, uh, High Tech was also a part of that too. But I watched that whole thing go from not pronouncing to his name to people seeing me in the street and like, "Yo, um, yo, give me that! I need that Quali! I need that Foul Mons! I need that! You know, Big L!" But Raucous was so smart because mostly all of their releases came out during homecoming would come out like in October so we would heavily promote it August, September and it would come out in October and back then um, you know before all the you know all the you could get satellite radio and all this and that it was just mixtapes and it was homecoming especially Howard Howard being I guess the number one homecoming you know I you know, I, debate me if you want, but you know it was it was number one. People would come from all over, and they would blast their car up and down Georgia Avenue. Right, right. And it was. I remember one year it was uh, Quali. It was the Reflection Eternal. It was this album came out, and Jay Z came out, and um, it was something else. But that's all you would hear. Those three songs coming from every car going up and down Georgia Avenue, I was like, "Yes, this is it." So it's kind of smart coming out of homecoming because you got a crowd to hear music. Built-in crowd. It was yeah, definitely self-promoted like that. So it was, it was, it was a beautiful thing, beautiful thing. So as as you're working, like when Rockets is starting and you're working these records, uh, what's the uh, mentality? at the home office of how good a job you're doing? Um, <clears throat> record labels, they care about... Numbers. <clears throat> numbers, especially first week numbers. It, I, I don't understand. Nothing's changed. Yeah, no, nothing's <laughs> changed. First week numbers. And um, my specialty was retail because I came from a retail background and um, I knew how to make sure you got sales. Even if... I knew how to make sure you got sales, whether it be contests, whether it be, hey, win a pair of tickets, if you buy, so forth and so on. You could wear a pair of, pair of tickets because they would, you know, come perform, 930 Club, you know. So you invented bundles? I wouldn't say I invented, <laughs> but let me tell you, I know, I, I know, <laughs> I know how to, I, I know how to make sure you get first day sales. You know what I'm saying? Sound scan and all of that. You know, you got to know your sound scan stores and, you know, who had a sound scan, how much it weighed, mm. um, stuff like that. And, and that was my gift. You know, I, I may have been slacking on the street team and the promotion, but, like, as far as sales, um, it was good. So New York would always be number one. Um, I think Miami would be number two, but D.C. would always For be. Raucous? Yeah. But, the, but D.C. would always be number three. Yeah, in sales. In sales. I'm still surprised. Why would that surprise you? That Miami would be number two. I think it was Miami. Don't don't quote me. But Miami... Um, Over Philly or... Well, Philly counted as part of this this region. Okay. Philly was mid-Atlantic. So Philly, oh, okay. Philly gotcha. definitely... Philly, Philly was definitely... Would be counted as part of this region. Um, but, yeah, I think it's it was crazy. Miami. I think Miami was too. 
and we would it would be a close two, but you know New York is number one, mm -hmm. but it would be a close two and three. But it, um, uh, uh, I think was it Khaled? Somebody had a strong hip hop show back then down in uh, Miami. That's why um, Angie's so big out there now. You know what I'm saying? Some it was a big hip hop show. I forgot who it was. Maybe it was Khaled. Because Khaled, Khaled had pulled on the station, sort of how Ticket had pulled down here. But uh, somebody, yeah, they would get play and they would they would get sales. But DC was number three in sales. And um, they did, loved it. They loved it. Consistently, too. Consistent. Did, did you ever try to uh, push artists that you knew to raucous? Like kind of A&R? Nah. I was just happy doing what I was doing. <laughs> I was concentrating on them sales. Get, I'm telling you, I would, I would concentrate on them sales. Oh, I know. Um, Trust no, me. Um, they knew that they knew the direction they were going. Um, they always had, you know, what's next. It, and the crazy thing about them is, I mean, you think about the album deals and who they had. They had single deals with a lot of people. They had single deals with uh, Eminem. Eminem. Yeah. So they had, and this was before. Before Dre. Listen, I swear to you, Lyricist Lounge came to 930 Club, the first Lyricist Lounge, and it was uh, hosted by Buckshot, and it, um, the guest act was KRS-One. But you would have new and up-and-coming rappers, um, you know, for Lyricist Lounge. That's how their the deal was. Why did nobody videotape this back then? Eminem was one of those new and up-and-coming rappers, and Buckshot was like, yo, this guy right here, this is all you hear in, in the projects of Brooklyn. He's about to be big. Uh, Eminem. Eminem came out there, booed him off the stage. He got booed off the stage at the 930 Club, first lyricist lounge. And, um, wow. Yeah, it was crazy. He was he was pissed, too, and got off the stage, and, like, um, uh, KRS had to come on and, and do his thing and hype the crowd up, but... Um, Raucous was always smart in giving album deals. I'm talking, I mean, vinyl, like, 12-inch deals. Like, right. Shabam Sadiq, you know what I'm saying? Um, Eminem had a, had a deal. Um, they even gave Dilla 12-inch deals. They gave Dilla 12-inch deals. They 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 were so smart. Their A&R was so smart and always was on the up-and-coming. It didn't... I didn't even have to do it. it. Just send me what you want me to. I believe in y'all. Just send me what y'all want. So I, yeah, I didn't. You you know my favorite uh, raucous twelve inch is, is well one of them, uh, Ghost Rider. Yeah. Damn. Skills. Yeah. Yo, Skills. when when that dropped, everybody was like, "Yo, who is he writing for?" Yeah. Yeah. Skills. Um. That's my man. <laughs> shout out to Skills. Yeah, shout out Skills. Two up, two down. He's DJ. He's yeah. a big, big time DJ now. But um, I had him towards the end. Um, <clears throat> Raucous, uh, um, well, let me tell a story first. Just remember, we, we on Skills. That's right. So um, Raucous would overload me with posters. Overload, I mean, like, just send so much. Shout out to my man Fahim, because he was on the street team, too. And um, yeah. they they would just send us so much stuff, and um, you know, uh, we'll show you some of the stuff that I got that uh, that I kept. But um, they would just send stuff and send stuff, and, and um, you know, I lived in Heather Hills at the time, so I didn't want no stuff there. I didn't want people to steal it, so I had to send to my mom's crib, and she, you know, she had a crib in Fort Washington. So she'd be like, "Oh my God, there's another box here. It's so heavy, I can't take it in. There's so many boxes." So uh, she hit me up, and then she was like, you know, there's another box outside. Um, so I, I went over there and got it. I was like, oh, my God, what is it now? I got everything, you know, what I, I got everything you need. So I opened it, and then I looked what's inside it, and then I dropped the box. <laughs> and um, this is how I knew they made it. I'll be right back. Oh, boy. Uh, this is what was in the box. Y'all see that? This was this is what was in the box. This is um, and right then and there, I said we made it <laughs> because I, I um, it's unheard of for an indie. It's 
unheard of for an indie at that time. Um, I don't even think most had a video. Did he have a video? He had a video for yeah, Miss Fat Booty. Booty. But for them... It, to, and Umi Says was in the commercial, right? Umi Says was big. Yes. Yeah, yeah Umi, Umi Says was big. But it was unheard of for an indie like that to have a gold record and to see it from the start just bubble up was like crazy and, oh, hold on. and this is physical units we're not talking about right. streams right. downloads this is 500,000 500,000 500,000 copies sold physical product and this is an indie amazing yeah so we get the plaque and I'm like whoa this is big um, then uh, we do the Big L album and I got another plaque. I'm not going to go in there and show you. We'll, sh- we'll show you pictures of it later. So I'm like, whoa, this is major. Sound Mama 2 goes gold. Um, and then all of a sudden, MCA, which is a, was the number one label at the time, a giant. MCA purchased Raucous. That's This is where the turn starts. Right. So they're no longer indie. Um, they don't have no more reps. Um... They, you know, it's the major has taken over, and for a major like that to see them, I mean, they was doing big things, but the right. major had taken them over. So, the crazy part about that is, uh, MCA was under Universal Music Group. Universal Music Group had offices right here in DC. So the person hiring for an MCA rep was my man Kevin Lipson who used to come to my camp mill and hang posters on the wall so this guy now runs the Universal Music Group so wow uh, shout out to my man Abe Claiborne too um, we gotta make sure he sees this he was like yo we're hiring for MCA rap and you know I heard Raucous just got picked up by MCA so I was like yo how do I do this he was like holla at your boy Kevin and I was like okay I'm gonna do that Hollered at Kevin, put a little resume together, this and that. And I had an interview at Universal Music Group. Get the job at Universal Music Group. So I didn't miss a beat. So I'm still doing raucous. So I didn't right. miss I didn't miss a release or anything. So but now, not only I'm doing raucous doing MCA. <laughs> MCA's label at the time was the Roots Common. Black Alicious, Mary J. Blige, uh, Jizza. Cause you had you had Geffen under MCA, right? Geff, Geffen and yeah, yeah, Geff, yeah, right. So then they was like, "Yo, you got to do rock too," and I'm like, <laughs> <coughs> "Rock." <laughs> and um, a cool story about um, doing rock. Um, just last night I met Reese, and Reese had an album. Reese was I put in quotes she was black girls rock before black girls rock mm-hmm. and um she had an album her manager was Corey Smith who was managing is that uh, Blacksmith Blacksmith Man- who was man- managing Kwali at the time so I got a good relationship with them and her album made me comfortable more comfortable to start getting into the rock world and Corey Smith he manages Dave Chappelle now he, he yeah, wow he, yeah he manages Dave Chappelle yeah he's He's crazy. His, his game is crazy. But, um, yeah, all I have to say, when I got to the MCA part of the Raucous, they had just signed skills. So when I got to Universal, I worked Universal in the D.C. area for one year, and the rep in L.A. was like, yo, you are number one rep. So after one year, they moved me to L.A. So I'm in L.A. doing MCA. <clears throat> and uh, skills... Skills came out there, and um, we had a ball. Like, I mean, there is some... L.A. is so wild, but there are, like... There's, like, a Filipino community. Uh, like the Beat Junkies. Right, right. And they were big on hip-hop. So... Raucous is still popping, <clears throat> but it's maybe not mainstream yet but there were like a, there was a store in Vegas called hiphopsite.com and then there was mm-hmm. a store in um, um, 
I remember part, a part of California called Stax. And Stax was ran by my man Icy Ice, Beat Junkies, Icy Ice. So I just got hooked up with him on social media again. And anything that we did there, millions, I mean, it would be so pa- uncomfortable packed, like call the police pack. So we did a, <laughs> we did a, we did a skills, uh, um, skills was like, we was in LA, so skills is like I'm hungry. Every, every rapper wanted to go to Roscoe's before we did whatever we had to do. So he went to Roscoe's, we got some meat. So we get to the place, the place is packed. You know, everybody's about skills and this and that. And uh, we're doing an in-store. And uh, this is just a random story. <laughs> and uh, We love randoms here. Yeah. And uh, Mike G from the uh, Jungle Brothers just walks in. <laughs> oh, what? So I'm sitting there, yeah. <laughs> so we're sitting there like, so we, like, we're on stage in-store. Like, you know, people are like, you know, uh, Skills is like rapping and, and people are buying stuff. So I'm like, yo, hold on. I got it. Time out, y'all. We got to stop. This. <laughs> this stuff we got Legend in the building. Yeah. So I I said, I got to take a picture with these two on stage. This is legendary. And this was before the cameras on the phone, this and that. So I stopped and took a picture with both of them and never got the picture. It was so crazy. Never got that picture. But I mean, it was packed. It was um, the 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 real hip hop places like really loved it, and um, you could start seeing the the more popular places like the Tower Sunsets and the um, Virgin. They had Virgin out there, Virgin Mega Stores. Mm-hmm. You could start seeing them go to that level. Yeah. What uh. But Skills was on MCA and then, did he have a, a raucous? No, Skills was on raucous. Skills at first. I don't. Think well, what is his album? Co- his album, his first album, did not come out on raucous. No, his first album, his his album came out a long time ago, because he had an album. Um... We got to look. We gotta, you yeah. know, Google is your friend. Yeah, keep talking. Yeah, um, his because his um because Q Tip found him, and they came out with an album like a long time ago. Because it was 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 Clef first, then it was Skills from Richmond. Why Clef? No, Clef, uh, Clef Dollars. The, oh, um, Clef Dollars. Ill Biscuits. Yes, I so, think they were first. So it was Ill Biscuits, then it was Skills from VA. But Skills. Ill uh, Biscuits was on Atlantic. Ill Biscuits was on Atlantic. Skills was on what? His first album. Uh, Let's see where Donnie was signed to first. Why is the my signal down in your basement, bro? You gotta hook I don't up know to what's the going on. <laughs> you gotta hook up to the wild. Uh, let's see. His first, yeah, he was on Atlantic, Big Beat. Okay, yeah, yeah, yep. they assigned to the, the and the, yeah, same wait, label. that that was a long time ago. Yeah, that was that was a long time ago. So, um, Raucous was after that. Raucous was at a long, a little ways after that. He probably did. He probably um was going for a little bit. Would you know? Would do tours or whatever, and um maybe did like twelve inch deals, you know, on a few mixtapes, but then. Uh, when Rockets started again, when Rockets got picked up by MCA, they signed Skills and this dude named Novel to album deal. The singer, yeah, yeah, I remember him. Yeah, he was. He, he was alright. Yeah, he was good. He was out in LA too. I mean, I used to show with him. He was. He, was, he was out in LA. He had a song. He was a street song. singer. He was a street dude. Right. Oh, I don't know if he's street dude. Chris but Brown before Chris Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was good too. Yes, he, he had he had some skills. Did Did you ever hear the uh, the unedited version of? Uh, Ghost Rider, with the names. No. Mm. Nah. <laughs> nah. Okay. Nah, but um, another great thing about Raucous is they did like, like unofficial stuff. Like, um, like I show, we'll we'll show you later. Yeah. But, um, they did like the videos. Their their promotional game was on point, and they would have like mixtapes. I never forget. I gotta go digging in the closet one day. And uh, they did a mixtape, and it was uh, Pharaoh, Black Thought, Common. They were freestyling on Stretch and Bobito, and um, Pharaoh went nuts. Black Thought, Black Thought was good too. I wouldn't but, expect anything but, less. But Pharaoh went nuts on this, and um, 
they would they would give out they would just give out like mixtapes with you know with, with like crazy freestyles on it and with whatever they had up and coming and it would just be classics and they you know they would get all of the DJs on it you know what I'm saying Evil D um, they you know they they their promotional game was crazy it was it was nuts where did where did sound bombing come from sound bombing was because that this, this is a very important stage in mm-hmm. Rockus's history right sound bombing was um with all the people they were signing the 12 inch deals and all the people they were signing the album deals um sound bombing was just a various artist way to get everybody on the record it was a vinyl mixtape right so you could see and you could find out who's basically going to be the next thing on Rockers. yeah so that's what sound bombing was and um they would get like a <clears throat> excuse me popular dj to um to, uh, mix it. to mix it and um the promos around sound bombing were crazy um I gotta find some of them too um well <laughs> yeah we got we'll show all of you later I got the little train set up there with uh I mean look at look at that Your skills most of skills um uh, uh, uh Pharaoh Shabazz Sadiq let, Eminem let me tell you whoever was responsible for signing artists at Raucous mm-hmm. You guys did an amazing job with High and Mighty. Oh yeah. That 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 album. Yeah. <laughs> B Boy Document. Yes. Um oh man. They didn't release a lot of singles, but um Porno Detective. Oh man. Right. Yo. Right. Man, you just made me think of uh they had Last Emperor for a couple of uh, yeah. stills. Last Emperor. They um, had, y'all had Beanie Siegel. Yeah. Yeah. For I think for the last sound, but that was the very last sound bombing. Mean, yeah, they I said earlier they, they yeah they they gave Dilla um, they gave Dilla a couple twelve inch deals. Oh, um, Dilla Fat Cat joint. The B Miners had a whole album out on Rockets. Had to take um, <laughs> tell the story. Um, <laughs> they were like yeah, um, B Miners are in town. B Miners had their album was heat. It was um, fire. It yeah. was underrated. Yeah, their album was heat. And uh, the song with Pete Rock and uh, the chick from uh, yeah, yeah, Loose Ends. Yes, oh. yes, yes. I got yeah. Mm. So, um, the the way they promoted uh, Evil D was they would bring him to your town and he would like mix at a club. And um, by the way, I hated his slogan. Well, Evil D is on. Yeah, yeah. kick it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But when he came to he came around our way. Um, the night that he came wasn't like a hip hop. Um, yo. Shout out to my man Dirty Hands. Cause, shout out to Dirty yeah, Hands. Shout out to Dirty Hands. What's up, Chuck? So, um, he had an event called Soul, Soul Camp. Camp. Amazing event. If you missed Soul Camp, you missed an important part of DC yeah, hip hop history. Yeah, definitely one of definitely. They bought Black Moon. Yeah. Soul they they bought Ghostface. I saw Ghostface with them. <sighs> but anyway, I tried to get Evil D for a Soul Camp, but we couldn't get him for a Soul Camp. So. The only thing that was popping that I had to take him to was the Ritz. And it was a, you know, this was a Ritz crowd night. It was that, Jiggy night. It was Jiggy night at the Ritz, at, you know, on one of the floors. So, Mike Scott, let, let loose them turntables, yeah, bro. Shout out Mike Scott. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mike Scott was there. Mike yeah. Scott, DJ Iron. Yeah, so, you know, he played a couple records, but it wasn't, you know. Yeah. yeah, he started doing the evil deals on the mix and all that. <laughs> and, wasn't like, nothing. and lost the crowd. Yeah, but that never takes the place of how fire his out the album was. <laughs> For real, it, it just you know it just happened Yo, to be that kind of night. The, the joint where Royce is fire. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, Royce a- had it. Yeah, Royce. Yeah, we had Royce. They eventually. Um, did they take over uh, the game records? I think game they recordings. Started, yeah, they started distributing the game stuff. Um, game game recordings was fire. They had Lava. Yeah. They had Black. They, every uh, everyone had the girl. Look. Blue Water. So I got a game. Nah, I got I got yeah, I got yeah. all the game records. Yeah, game was a crazy label. Roy, Royce had what was it? The King and I. Woo mm-hmm. boy! Yeah. If y'all never heard Royce, Royce on, and Eminem did a game album on game. I think. Good versus evil. Yeah, the first one. Yep. Uh, the original one is, I call it. Yep. Oh, the, the days. Those were the days. Oh man. Man. When, oh my 
God. Oh, uh, Last Emperor. Mm-hmm. Like, sh- shortly after Raucus, didn't he get signed to Aftermath? Or was he writing yeah. for Aftermath yes. at yes. the same time? Yeah. Yeah, he had a um, he had a 12-inch deal. Um, he had a joint called the Internet MCs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go figure. <laughs> Internet MCs where he was, like, just setting it to, like, you know, he I guess he knew the future. That's, yeah, that's he the, saw the future. Yeah. Um, but he was dope. As a matter of fact, um, Dirty Hands brought him out here for Soul Camp. And um, Dirty Hands has a mix CD that I got right behind his camera. Where he's uh, freestyling on it, and I, that's when I met. Last Is that the one with the yellow cover, called Axiom, or I something? Just, yeah, I have that. I have yeah. the tape. <laughs> yeah, actual mixed tape. Shout out, Dirty Hands. Oh man, Dirty Hands. Yeah, yep. Those were the days. Oh my god. What What, what are some of your favorite releases off of Rockets? Um, the the thing that got me. Uh, was Universal Magnetic, Most Deaf. Um, and that was right on that. And when I heard that, I was like, what? And, and Body Rock. Body Rock. Uh, Shout out to Tash. Yeah. Tash I'm is, an, alcoholics. Is, an, um, uh, is an animal. I'm telling you, like, um, I'm from New York City. I'm from Queens. And, you know, I remember everybody used to talk about East Coast, West Coast beef. And I'm like, yo, yo, souls of mischief and alcoholics? Yo, they could mess. Yo, there's so many groups out there that can mess with so many people. So I was, you know, always a fan of of, of like certain, you know, West Coast acts. But, and but Tash, Jay Swift, oh, yeah. so under. He yeah. didn't he do Running by Far Side? Then he did produced he do, Running. Did he do that? I was I was trying to win. Um, somebody asked me the other day. Shout but, out to Jay Swift. Yeah, Jay I think Swift. I think he did that. Yeah, yeah, crazy man. Underrated. Licks. Um, uh, they were like the West Coast beat nuts to me. Yeah, exactly. Souls of Mischief were, you know, that whole clan. You couldn't, you couldn't mess with them. Ninety three to Infinity, you know, the whole East Coast got mad because that album was so good. <laughs> I got that album on instru- <laughs> I bought that album on instrumental because <laughs> that album was so good. I got the instrumentals to Souls of Mischief. Yeah. But uh, that whole hiero- hieroglyphics, yeah, they were well, killing. What, what else did you like on Raucous? Uh, Raucous, my favorite, uh, definitely was most um, Reflection Eternal. Mm. Um, the, one of the craziest albums. Uh, I remember we said Evil D, but one of the craziest albums that ever came out on Raucous was my man High Tech. High Technology. Oh yes, yes. High yes. Technology was ridiculous. Yeah. What was the single? Um, no, I'm thinking. Sun God, that was Sun that was God. Yeah, yeah, Sun God. Yeah, yeah. I had the Sun God 12 inch. I was like, yo. And the crazy thing about it is that was so bootleg. It was so. It was. There was an original. Yo. There was an original song that they had, but that song was so bootlegged that they had to put. They had to come out with the Sun Gods. The the original song that he did with Common was nuts, and uh, Fat Beats, I think. My man at Fat Beats, they they was bootlegging it, or somebody was bootlegging it, but that had the Damn. round and rounds, you know. Yes. That, was, that and she was on Raucous. Oh, she and she was with High Tech. She, yes. She did um, round and round. She got signed to Def Jam eventually. Right, and that's how the Red but and Meth got on her remix. Round and round. I got spins for round and round from H U R. H U R is an adult. Contemporary stations. Right. So now we moving to Raucous getting spins on adult contemporary stations. Round and round was it got spins everywhere. That was the joint. Yeah. I tagged this thing on that. But uh Base one of my um, crazy. one of my favorites being from Queens, um, Farrell, who just uh I think he just celebrated what, twenty? For the for the album? Yeah. Wow. I think he because he just did something in Brooklyn. Was it a week ago? It was right after the Roots picnic. Um, Internal Affairs, yo. Dope album. One of the, Dope yeah, album. One of the greatest. Like, dun, I, dun, 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 see the light, yeah. baby. Yes. Woo! Yes. yes. Uh, yo, you know Diamond did Diamond that. D did Diamond that. Did, yeah, Diamond D did that. Yeah, it, oh my God. Yo, um, it, to me, I, I like that better than um, 
what's the joint with the guy Zilla sample? Simon says, like, that was my. I don't know. Nothing like, new. the delight, man. When I got that. I, lo- I, I love that too, but there was. Um, Simon says for the clubs. The two. The two songs, if I hear it anywhere, I could be at church, I could be at a, I could be at a funeral, I could be at in the hospital. The two songs that'll get me hype, and, and I'm from Queens, is Brooklyn Zoo, ODB. If I if I hear that start, I'm getting hype. As Simon says, Simon says is. Don't nuts. don't don't don't. Did you see um? Don't 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 don't. Yo, shout out to Vicky Gravity. She was at the Roots picnic and um, they was doing the mixtape part, the J period. And Farrell looked at her camera and was like, "Yo, get the fuck up!" Right in her camera, I was um, like, "Yo, that made me." How does Vicky be- keep grabbing these moments? She's, she's Vicky uh, is everywhere. Camera person to the stars, you know. what I'm so, saying? Yeah, she's camera person to the stars. Big up, big up. Yeah. So Farrell, I think that was my favorite. Um, you know, working with him. Uh, um, he, he was a little different back in the days and uh, fashion tastes and, and, and stuff like that. But MCN, oh, yo, Farrell is, he's untouchable. I mean, he's untouchable. He'll, he'll break down your styling. Yo, on that mix city that he did with, um, uh, I was telling you, Dave was on Stretching Bobbito. He, he, this was around, uh, he was, he said, I'm, I'm, Pulling out of trunks like Lee Malvo, he was like going crazy. That was the D- that was the DC sniper. I was yeah. like, I was like, yo, Farrell is crazy. He's nuts. Yeah, yeah. Shut out Farrell. Yo, I think um, I don't know if it was um, Iron or Trini or CeeLo. Somebody played B Boy Document mm. on the radio one night. <laughs> yeah. And kept bringing it. Yeah, I lost my mind. Yeah, when, when it when it uh, when it caught on and and everybody was like, "Yo, oh, this is it." I mean, and I didn't even know these dudes was white. There's nothing like watching something go from nobody knows to everybody knowing. Yes, I mean, that that feeling to see an independent winner, it's like uh, it's the best, man. Yeah. So, what was what was like the last days of Rockers? What what was the problem? Were, were they just trying to be too uh, commercial? Um, problem was, and um, they should have learned this from Nervous. Um, uh, if most, if most death and feral minds. I hang out with Nate Dog, and Nate Dog has a limo, private jet. You know what I'm saying? And most of them, Pharaoh, like, um, we have gold albums. What's up? You know, um, it gets it gets kind of crazy. Um, it it gets kind of crazy if you're. If you if you think you're big and then you do a record with somebody who's really who's really big and has right. like the you know the backing of like a a Dre or somebody and um it doesn't it never messes up and you know um it, it's about the dollar at the end and you know if no matter what if you're indie you cannot do for your artist like a major can so when you look at that and you know they're doing stuff with. Uh, you know, raucous, and they they like, you know what? I want to be MCA proper. I want that MCA budget. You know what I'm saying? Right, so it, right. it, it's it's hard. You know, once it gets successful, and you know, you're still an indie label, and you're still gonna have an indie budget, and you're still gonna have you know, an indie indie promo type budget. So it, it's you know, at the end of the day, they they are uh, most of the artists. Uh, just went to MCA proper and um, MCA started really dropping uh, MCA just went downhill um, they had signed like a pop artist to like a mega deal and, and she didn't like the label and she sued them I forgot the artist's name but they started going through troubles and then Interscope just it became Geffen and then Interscope just 
just ate it up. Right. Ate up all the artists. It was crazy because MC, um, MCA was that joint. Yeah. MCA was the. Even though they didn't put out that Dilla record, that Dilla album. This is a true story. <laughs> you have it. <laughs> I'm gonna give you two true stories. This is two true stories. No, but, but before you get into the two uh-huh. two stories, Miss Fat Booty remix with Ghostface. Oh, uh, yeah, I got that. My number, my number three, my my number two of my number three favorite rockers uh, records. Yeah, yeah. Because I I was surprised. I'd never. I would have never thought. Yeah, th- this was. It what, came out of nowhere. Yeah, but um, get by. To get by with Jay Z, and everybody yes, on it. Yeah, yeah, they were just people started, you know, really accepting them. You know what I'm saying? And, and it just started coming with collabos, and, and you know, people were on board. I mean, it was at a time, you know, um, it was at a time when uh, Jay Z was big at the time, and for him to come on a Tyler Kweli record and know who Tyler Kweli is, it was that time where everybody knew. And they were actually playing that on the radio. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, yep. Did did the quality go gold? And might I say, first time I ever heard Kanye West beats. Remind me of another true three story stories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that went gold. I, yeah, quality had to go gold because I remember quality was saying something about that. I, you know, I'm still waiting for my plaque. So okay. yeah, quality quality had to go gold. All right, first story. Um, my uh, before I moved to LA, um, the Roots did a two dollar bill MTV tour show here at the nine thirty club. Mm-hmm. Um, the big head honcho at MCA Urban Music was uh, <laughs> you know who Venus Flytrap is? No, Tim Reed. Well, you might know him from Sister Sister. He was yeah, yeah, yeah. His son, Tim Reed, Tim, Tim Reed the t- two or third, TR three, Tim Reed the third, was the big man at Urban Records. Really? Yeah. And, okay. And um, he had family out here, so he came out here during the um, the Roots two dollar bill tour. Uh, this was big deal MTV. Uh, I mean, it was this was a big deal. So he came out and. Uh, you know, this is I'm like, oh my god, the biggest Zach is here from MCA, and then I was like, hey, that's uh, Tim Reed, that's his son. So we we tell him. So, I asked him. I was like, um, I heard uh, y'all got a a demo from Jay Dilla, cause I was Jay Dilla, I was Jay Dilla's biggest fan then, and, and uh, he was like, yeah, yeah, how'd you hear that? I was like, yeah, I know, I heard you. <laughs> What's up with the Dilla record? He was like, yo. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Um, he did this remake of Cars by Gary Newman. I, I don't know. You know, I don't know. So I was like, what? Well, you know, whatever. Let's go into the show. Five seconds later, Quest Loves comes out the tour bus. And he was like, yo, TR3, what's up with my man Dilla? What's up with his record? I, You know, I, you got that record? What's up? I swear to God, he asked wow. about the same record. And Timmy looked at me like, <laughs> this must be something. So... Um, He's he probably doesn't even know the you know the 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 magnitude of Della. He knows the magnitude because Questlove, the way he asked him, he's been putting it in his head. Okay, like, sign, make sure you sign this guy. This is Della, so he knew that. So I moved to L.A. three months later, and I'm at the guy's offices now. I'm at the L.A. offices for meetings every in the morning. So I'm in his office, and I see. <laughs> I see the uh, the Dillo demo on his desk, <laughs> oh. and um, <laughs> as much as I wanted to get him signed, you don't know how hard it was for me for not to steal <laughs> this demo from this guy's desk. I'm thinking of every scheme in the world. <laughs> I mean, he's like talking to me. He's like at a desk talk. I'm in LA. You know, th- this is like first couple times I come to his office. He's like uh, big time, and he's like, "Yeah, Jay, you're gonna you're gonna do fine here, and and LA is is it's a good territory." And I'm like, <laughs> like, 
Yo, how can I? Please get, go get some water. How can I get this? <laughs> take this out of here. That's all I was focused on. I ain't hear anything to do with that. I was like, oh, it's right here. Yeah, yeah. It was that was crazy. Wow. All right, story number three. No, um, number two. That was two. Oh, oh, okay. The, uh, first was the Roots Dollar Tour with Okay. Quest. Then that was two. Uh, so seeing this, this the Kanye West story see, now. Yeah. Um, Mr. West. Kanye West. Uh, was really down with Quali. Mm-hmm. Uh, back when the first raucous party I did in LA, um, Kanye West was there, and this was before. This was before the through the wire, and this was I mean this was maybe right around the time he he was dealing with the rock, but he would tour with Quali, and um, we did we you know we had Quali. High tech, excuse me, maybe a whole lot, you know, different MCs at the table. And Kanye West was there. And I'm like, who's this? I mean, he's talking and like loud and like this and that. And you know, the running joke was, oh man, he. Uh, Damn. Uh, Kanye was annoying back then. Kanye was on, on, his, on that Henny again, this and that. He's wilding out. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> Kanye's on that Henny. Yeah. <laughs> On that, he, he must have had that Henny again. Like he would drink, oh. like, he would drink like whole bottles of Henny back then. I don't even dropping know. hot takes. Yeah. But he was, an, he was an asshole. But the thing I respect about him, this was before he was famous, and he was like, "Yeah, that's me. I am an asshole." I mean, he. That's why it never shocks me what he does because he knew. He knew that's how he was even before he was known. I mean, this was a raucous party. He was just sitting at the table, like, "Who is this dude?" I mean, that's your reaction, but right. he he knew it. He was like, "Yeah, that's me." But him and Quali have totally two different. Well, I don't know. Oh, he did, lived like that. He did. He did like a lot of beats for Quali back in the day. He Kanye always been on his beats, no matter how yeah. crazy he is. Kanye's beats, uh, whatever. But as a matter of fact. Um, Vegas um, one of my favorite MCs in the world Doom was opening up for Quali back then when Quali was uh, I think it was the start of that, that the Quali tour or whatever so Doom was opening up for Quali I'm backstage I see Doom without the mask we might, we might have to edit that <laughs> and just chill him and then uh, in uh, Quali's dressing room Dame Dash was there and they was um, hollering at Kanye and PD Crack was there and I'm like this is the most randomest thing <laughs> well, I'm in Vegas it had to be like a fight or it had to be like a fight like, Vegas was my territory when I was out in LA but it was Doom Without the Mask um, Dame Dash Dame Dash and PD Crack and PD Crack in Tyler Quali's in Tyler Quali's dressing room and I'm sitting there like that's random as hell very random yeah, but it went down. Yeah, uh, young Petey Crack. I was like, yo, that's Petey Crack. Yeah. So, wow. So I I knew kind of then, um, the one that Ruckus was being known and that um, Dame was always for Kanye, no matter what. Because, you know, them dudes at The Rock, they used to laugh at Kanye. Well, I stick to producer, man. You talking about the MC? Uh you know, the cast at the rock, you know, it was right. like, yo, just make me a beat, man. But um he um he was an asshole back then. And uh I never forget that it was like, yo, he wilded out on Taylor Swift. I was like, I believe it. You know, I whatever whatever he does, I believe because he's it, it's crazy he, I, I don't I wouldn't say crazy, but he's just he knows he was an asshole. And he knows he knows right. that's how he did it and he never hit it. He was like, Yeah, that's me. The... So yo, we have to come back and tell some more stories. Mm-hmm. So, thank you, sir. Appreciate thank your you. time. Appreciate yo, he, gonna, he gonna show you some pictures of some stuff, man. Oh man, it, yeah. We about to shoot some photos. It's gonna be some yeah, amazing, yeah, some so, amazing stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Maybe, maybe. And, and um, the the future. Um, when y'all see all this stuff, the future is. Um, you know, I got more than raucous like memorabilia. So the future is, I mean, more than even more than hip hop. I mean, we got like jazz posters. We got, y'all know I'm the king. Of, I'm DJ YZO, the neo soul king, and all of that. So you know my neo soul game is crazy. 
But um, in the future, we're going to do exhibits. So Plug your show. Can, yeah, so y'all can stoop. Oh, Soul Conversations on WPFW. Tuesday nights, WPFW, go to soulconversationsradio.com if you want to hear all of that soul, for real. But um, when y'all see some of this uh, memorabilia, just know in the future we're going to be doing exhibits at, like, uh, galleries all across the country. And uh, you can see some of this stuff and maybe even purchase, you know, some of this stuff. So look for that. Look forward to that in the future. Y'all, thank y'all, for real. All right. We out.